So, hi, Colin. Thank you for joining us one more time in our event. I will make you a co-host so you can also share your camera and your screen. Just a second. Yes, now I think you have the access to do that. There we go, perfect. All right, thank you for the introduction. Um, and thank you for hosting, uh, hosting us. There we go. All right. Um, Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Colin Helke. I'm a North American consultant for Seabird Media. Uh, we're an Atlassian uh, Platinum partner, uh, primarily based in uh, Germany. Um, but we have products uh, and customers all around the world. Uh, and today, I'll talk to you a little bit about Linchpin Cloud and the future of uh, digital collaboration. Um, bef before we uh, get into the future of things, uh, let's you know take a look back at, at last year. So um, you know early 2020, the Linchpin Internet Suite uh, turned five years old, and it it really matured into a um, the the top dog in uh, Linchpin or uh, Internet uh, software that's uh, based on Confluence and. Um, you know, as an analytics guy, I put together a couple of stats for you. Um, and, you know, the first stat, probably the one I'm most proud of is um, 250 customers. So the Linchpin Internet Suite um, at that time uh, had customers of all sizes across the, across the globe. So we ranged from, you know, small started startups of less than 50 users all the way to global companies that uh, a span across uh, uh, multiple countries with over 50,000 uh, users. So that uh, kind of shows that, you know, while Confluence can, can scale to your needs, so can uh, the internet suite. Uh, One million users is an, another stat I'm, I'm pretty proud of, and I'm proud of our, our teams that uh, have worked on it from the development teams to marketing to sales, um, that knowing that at any you know, given day, a million people could be using uh, Lynchpin as their, their intranet and, um, and Lynchpin's helping them uh, work. Uh, and then, you know, uh, shout out our partners. They have a, a strong partner network across the world of you know, 30 plus partners um, that helps sell uh, Lynchpin as well as uh, provide Lynchpin support, whether that's uh, implementation projects or um, ongoing support through uh, a company's internet journey. Uh, you know, the first surprise of, of 2020 was the, the end of sale for Atlassian server um, products in, in 2021 and then end of life in 2024. And, um, you know, being a, a German company that kind of surprised us because um, in the German market at that time, we didn't see a ton of cloud ad adoption. And, um, you know, that, that showed in our products. So the Lynchman Internet Suite, is, as well as Agile Hive, our, our scaled Agile offering, uh, were only available for uh, server and data center. We didn't have a cloud option for those two, uh, those two products. Uh, so, uh, you know, it really got us thinking about uh, how we can uh, move to the cloud, you know, what's next for us. Uh, and then next, probably the, the main, uh, main surprise of 2020, a global pandemic um, that kind of uh, uh, changed how we do, did everything from our personal lives to our work lives. Um, and, you know, uh, really I'll focus on remote work as, you know, most of us probably uh, didn't expect to to work remotely throughout uh, throughout uh, uh, before 2020. But um, you know, as 2020 came, I think most of us worked remote. Um, and as an uh, internet uh, software developer, uh, we had to really question about uh, or question if remote work is going to stay. What are the, the challenges of remote work? What are the pros uh, when it comes to remote work? What are the cons? 
And we really, um, you know, took a deep dive into those questions and then, um, then tried to answer how can Lynchpin uh, Cloud support, you know, remote work, you know, whether it's uh, mitigating some of the cons or enhancing some of the pros of, of remote work. Uh, so to kind of answer the first question about uh, is remote work here to stay? Uh, we looked towards uh, the Silicon Valley tech companies. They were very early adopters of, of remote work as their you know, employees are very tech savvy and they could, they could easily move. Um, you know, Twitter was, was kind of the first to, to take charge, but you know, Atlassian, Slack, Facebook, all the tech companies eventually kind of followed suit. And they realized working from home, there's no difference. You know, it might even be better for our employees to work from home depending on their situation. And so that's why uh, Jennifer Christie, head of HR at Twitter came out and, and released a statement saying opening the offices will be our decision. When and if our employees come back, we'll be theirs. Uh, so, you know, Twitter is giving the option uh, to each individual employee, you can come back if you want to. So at Twitter, remote work, is there to stay. Uh, looking at another uh, approach to it at, at another software company at, at Salesforce, they had a different uh, kind of more analytical approach to it. So they sent out a survey monthly uh, in 2020, you know, getting, um, getting the answers they wanted to, to hear. So Peter Schwartz, work futurist at Salesforce, kind of analyzed the data uh, from each month and saw at the start of the pandemic, people wanted to, to work from home, you know, the majority of them. Towards uh, the middle uh, of the year, you know, people wanted to get back to the office. They missed, uh, they missed their, their colleagues. They wanted that social interaction. He found that it, it leveled out at about 60% of people wanted uh, to work from home. So I think at most, you know, tech companies, uh, remote work's there to stay. Uh, but looking at, um, a more conservative German workforce, um, you know, as that's kind of our, our uh, main customer base right now, we wanted to see, you know, where, um, where work was heading for them. So we found a study of about 7,000 uh, German workers, um, where 77% of them said they uh, you know, wanted to work at least partially from home once uh, uh, coronavirus is kind of done. So um, what we can kind of can, Include from these, you know, three you know, surveys or three companies, is that remote work is here to stay. Whether that's working home uh, at home fully or partially, one or two days a week, remote work is here to stay in most companies. And as we uh, looked into remote work, we also found uh, that remote work is is weakening social ties. So, uh, along with that that study. Um, uh, for uh, uh, the German workforce where they wanted to work remote, they also said that they missed uh, direct contact with colleagues. So 78% of the people uh, were missing that uh, direct contact. And you know uh, we can infer from that and, and the survey did as well is that important social relationships were dissolving in the workplace. So you know we, we dug a little bit deeper into that and we found uh, Microsoft's work trend index, which is, uh, kind of a uh, summation of a bunch of different uh, studies and uh, data analysis of different universities all put into to one thing and Microsoft publishes it. Um, the two kind of key takeaways that sum up almost the whole thing is the title, which is the next great disruption is hybrid work. And then this quote where it says, the shift to remote work shrunk people's networks companies became more siloed than they were pre-pandemic. Um, so what they you know, really saw in, the, um, in the, the survey or in the, the study is if you, you know, read through it more is that um, people were missing those connections, you know, the, the outside connections, the people you might see once a month at the water cooler, coffee break, you know, a, a birthday gathering or in the lunchroom. Uh, you lose those connections and, and your, your social networks start shrinking to those, those core people you talk to daily, which are most likely the people on your team. Uh, so uh, when you're working remote, you don't get those social interactions with, 
people unless you need them for something work related. So knowing uh, rem remote work is here to stay, uh, social interaction is probably one of the biggest uh, biggest challenges of remote work. You know, how do we develop Lynchpin Cloud? You know, do we take the Lynchpin Internet Suite, copy it exactly over it to be Lynchpin Cloud? You know, how are we we going to uh, approach this? Simple answer: yes and no. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, Lynchpin's always going to stay Lynchpin. Uh, for those of you familiar with the Internet Suite. You know, we're going to take those features and they're going to be there on Lynchpin Cloud, but we're starting from scratch and going to reevaluate almost everything and make it more moderate, make it easier to use, um, add more features, you know, uh, where people were requesting them, where, you know, on the suite, it might take a little more uh, reworking. Now, starting from scratch, you know, we can develop it from the ground up with the features we've seen people want over the last five, six years of Lynchman Internet Suite. Uh, so I'm gonna go over uh, a couple of, of different features of, of Lynchman Cloud in, in uh, Lynchman Internet Suite, and uh, then jump into a pretty short demo to show you the uh, beta of, of where we're at now, then talk a little bit about our early access program, um, and then get into to some questions if, if you have them. So the first thing uh, of any intranet is, is the homepage. Um, it, it's the first place you go uh, probably during the day when you open up your, your browser. Uh, it should be uh, where people feel comfortable, where they can jump off to you know do their work, where they come back for communication. Um, so that's Lynchman Cloud will offer you know, uh, a theming where you can theme it your colors, change the text, had your logo, make it feel like it's your own. And probably the most important uh, uh, feature for uh, any intranet uh, is communication. I know my uh, project I've worked on, it's not, uh, it's uh, a requirement. You know, it's, it's the number one thing. You, this is the place where we need to communicate everything and it needs to be so like the and sweet uh, you know, categorize and to certain personalized create a uh, a list of news articles for office a and then a, new, a list of news articles for office b so each office is getting uh, targeted information uh, at them rather than having just a single list of, uh, of articles where people, you know, if they're overloaded with information, they might not read uh, everything. And then also, as with the Internet Suite, we're keeping the your reading list. So you can see that on the, the right side um, where you can uh, personalize uh, your reading list with whatever topics you want. So, you know, if you're in Office uh, A, you can, you know, get articles from Office B in your reading list rather than, you know, having them take up uh, your front page. Digging a little deeper into the blogs or news, um, we have a, a pretty uh, simple uh, editor currently, which uh, is really nice. You know, you don't have to worry about formatting and you know, moving a bunch of sections around and making sure the picture's nice and square and, and, and everything like that. Our, our editor, you know, allows you to um, create uh, good looking, easy to read content um, quickly. You, you don't have to, to spend a lot of time formatting and making it look good, which allows you to uh, create good content rather than, than making it look good. Uh, user profiles. Um, it will be, you know, pretty much the same. A little bit, uh, little enhancements um, from the Lynchman Internet Suite, but you know, you still have your your different profile fields, whether it's skills, languages, um, birthdays, uh, interests, different things like that. Uh, we will, uh, we're keeping all that. I know me being in the U.S. and our office being in Germany. Uh, I didn't get to meet everyone uh, during my orientation, but I know that we have our profiles all filled out. 
I can, um, you know, look at a certain team and, and see what skills they have and, and uh, get the help I need uh, and learn if someone speaks English um, or, or if they just speak German. And then I can reach out to that person rather than, you know, asking around to who should I talk to about what, then, you know, that might take a little bit. I can just search, uh, search our pro profiles and, and filter out uh, who I need to talk to. Uh, events, you know, events uh, will behave pretty much the same way as well. Um, you know, sending event invites via email um, to people who may not be interested in that event, you know, people start ignoring events. Uh, this way, uh, with Lynchpin events, you can uh, create events, mention them in blogs, have people sign up if they're interested, whether that's trainings, birthday parties, you know, after office parties, stuff like that can be uh, put in linchpin events and that clears up some of uh, some people's inboxes uh, right away. And it, it also you know, offers you to see who's you know, all going, you can comment on the event, get more details, uh, different things like that. Uh, then probably my next favorite part, uh, maybe it's my most favorite, uh, our posts or what's known in the linchpin internet suite as uh, microblogs are um it's really a, a facebook like feed for the for the internet uh, we we use it almost as like an all chat so we're a little above 200 people but um really anything or, or nothing's off limits um in, in the microblog we can go from from dog pictures to baby pictures to um security updates to financial news um, they all have their own topics in our, our microblog. And if, you know, I don't want to see dog pics, if I'm a cat person, I unfollow that topic. I don't see it, but it's a great way for me, especially being remote to see, uh, what's going on with, with different people. I get, you know, I can have those conversations within the microblog rather than having maybe those chats siloed in a, in a, a Slack or a team's uh, chat. Uh, and then kind of lastly, um, mobile. So uh, Lynchpin Internet Suite has a mobile uh, app that, you know, it does the most everything um, that uh, the in-browser version does. But we're really, we, we, we really spent the time and, and focused on mobile and making every feature available, um, available on mobile. So anything you can do in Lynchpin Cloud, you'll be able to do on the mobile app. Uh, and, you know, we wanted to focus this or focus on this because, uh, you know, if you're, you wanted to look up what room number someone is in their, in their profile, and you don't want to open up your laptop or have to run back to your desk to, to do that. Or, or where is it? Where is the event address? You know, you should have that on your phone, have it easy to use. You know, you can comment on, on the microblog saying, oh, I'm here at this event. Uh, you can sign up for different events on your phone just makes um, interacting with colleagues and interacting with your internet a lot easier. So I'm gonna jump into a quick live demo. Um, like I said, uh, I wanna get to, um, I wanna get to the early access program and then answer any questions that uh, you guys might have. So let me quick go over here. Um, so right now we're in beta, so and this is a test instance, so it doesn't have a ton of uh, content in it. But um, you can get your own uh, beta environment for free and play around with it. Um, I'll send out a couple links um, after this uh, or towards the end when I'm answering questions. Uh, first thing, you can see the the Lynchpin theming. Um, you have the uh, Lynchpin logo at the top, the, the nice pink color uh, on the side, and then, uh, you know, the white fonts and everything. Uh, next kind of major feature is, uh, is news or blogs um, highlighted at the top. If I click into one of those, you know, you can see uh, the nice formatting, uh, you know, of the picture. It's, it's pretty clean. Uh, links out to, to different um, different places, and then I can you know react. Um, you know I can heart I can love the article I can like it you know um, and as well as add a comment um, 
to my colleagues, you know, saying, you know, if I want to mention Karina and say, you know, check this out, um, they'll get a notification of that. Uh, and then we can start a conversation from there. Back to the home page. You know, the next um, next two things uh, are the is the microblog in in events. Uh, microblog, you know, we're testing out at mentions. Um, but if we scroll down, we can see you know someone's mentioning their their anniversary, um, and people are celebrating that. You know, I can I can like that. Um, and uh, someone talks about a conference that you know people are are asking about signing up or if there's a recording or things like that. Uh, and then you know, last thing on the homepage right now is um, uh, the events. So I'm signed up for the summer festival and, and on August eighth. And if I click on on this, I can you know, get some more details uh, about when it is, who's attending, uh, different things like that. Uh, going, you know, quickly through the the different um, options on the the side here, you know, news. So those three blog articles we saw on the homepage are here, um, and if we had more, the the list would keep going on. Um, but right now, we don't have categories in place, um, so you just get the a complete list of of blogs with the the uh, last one on the top. Um, moving on to people. Um, you know, kind of the same thing. Uh, right now, you can just search by uh, name and email uh, to get to uh, user profiles. Um, eventually, you'll be able to filter by uh, profile fields. Uh, continue on. It's this is the, the microblog, the same uh, list that we saw on the homepage. Kind of the same thing of news. We don't have the categories quite yet. Um, so you can see the, the latest blogs or the latest microblogs at the top. And then uh, events, kind of the same way, the, the next events at the top, if I click on it, I can then join that event uh, and I get my, uh, my meeting invite. So kind of a quick, um, quick beta demo. Uh, if you want more, uh, I'll have some information on, on the next slide uh, after this, uh, where you can sign up for a meeting. Uh, but our early adopter program um, that uh, we kind of are just, just releasing is um, has a couple great benefits for, for people that are interested in, in Lynchpin and would like to you know kind of commit to the journey uh, uh, with us. So we're gonna offer uh, a kind of an advanced pricing for two years. So once we release, um, we'll have a pricing structure. You're gonna get a, a heavy discount for two years um, after our official release. Uh, Bi-weekly meetings, uh, you know, to discuss feedback challenges and usage. Uh, you know, feedback really drives what we do uh, or what we develop. Uh, so, uh, we would like to, you know, meet with you every other week and discuss, um, you know, how can we develop Lynchpin Cloud to to fit your needs and make it, you know, the heart of, of your company. Uh, access and advanced roadmap kind of goes along with the, the feedback. You know, as we put features on on our kind of internal roadmap, we're gonna uh, try and let you know as soon as possible when those will be uh, developed as well as, you know, setting up a dedicated support channel. So uh, instead of putting a, um, uh, you doing ticket or putting in tickets, we'll set up a chat channel where you can, uh, you know, probably message me and I can uh, answer your questions or, you know, forward your issues onto the, the dev team and we can move a little bit quicker on those rather than uh, having to play email tag with, with support. So I'd like to thank you guys before uh, we kind of get to questions and then, um, a couple of links which I can put in chat right now. The first link is to our uh, our website, uh, so you can find more information there, and you can also um, uh, you can also sign up for a, a beta site there. The second link, superbiz slash cloud demo, is a a uh, meeting invite for all of our consultants. So you know you choose a time on there if it's you know, in the US time zone, I most likely will get it. Um, but, you know, we'll talk you through the uh, cloud demo that I, or the beta instance that I showed, 
a little more in depth. And then the last one is, is my meeting invite. You can, you can choose a time if you want to specifically meet with me. Um, so if we have any questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Pauline, for the presentation. We have one question here from Anna Maria. Can I attach photos to my posts directly from my from mobile? Uh, I believe so. It, it isn't something I've uh, tested, but yes, I, I believe you can. Yes. And uh, other question from mm, Rafael. From your perspective, the use of tools like Lynchpin can reduce the stress of working from home in long term. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, definitely something we, we think about. I know, so I, ever since I started at Supermedia, I've been working from home, you know, even pre pandemic. Um, and I know, um, uh, Lynchpin internet suite has, uh, we've been using the on-prem version, uh, obviously, because clouds just being developed, but, you know, the first, you know, 30, 40 minutes of my day is always spent just reading the microblog or any blogs that came out because, um, you know, it really connected me with what's going on. So we, like I said, we use the microblog for pretty much all like company-wide communication than any like major news is in uh, a blog or a news article. And reading those, it almost feels like I'm, I'm connected in, in a way. I mean, I'm not at the office, um, but it allows me to, to interact with my colleagues on a non-work type basis, which uh, is really nice for the last last couple of years. Nice, thank you. Well, I think with that, we just have that these questions. I'd like to thank you one more time, Colin, for joining us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Obrigado, pessoal, por terem acompanhado mais essa apresentação. Agora nós teremos o intervalo do almoço. Voltamos às 13h25, 1h25 da tarde, com o um case de sucesso da Nava, falando um pouquinho da migração para a nuvem. Agradeço a todos. Bye, Colin. Bye.